Good afternoon, everybody. I have some really good, really good news that I want to share with you coming out of Minnesota regarding black women and missing black women. Minnesota has created a bill that would create the nation's first office investigating missing black women and girls. The legislation would establish an office to review missing persons and cold cases. This is something so good because so many, so many young black ch children and women are missing in this country. I mean, thousands upon thousands. And we know that we're often neglected when it comes to news media coverage and being, being looked for, you know, so I'm really, really happy to see this. And I want to share more of this story with you of what's going on in Minnesota. Shout out to Minnesota for doing this. This is amazing. As you can see with this photo, many people gathered to remember Relisha Rudd. Dozens of them. March 1st marked the second anniversary of her disappearance. So dozens of people and children within the community participated in remembering her. Minnesota state lawmakers are moving forward with a bill that would establish the nation's first office to investigate cases of missing black women and girls as tens of thousands of women of color remain missing in the U.S. On February 20th, the Minnesota House voted 11019 in favor of advancing the House Bill HP. FF or HFFF. They said, and it's on the fast track this year to be signed into law. Representative Ruth Richardson, the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, the bill's author told Yahoo News, this is part of the governor's budget and it's one of his top priorities. So we're excited to be, a, you know, we're excited to be at a point where we can finally get this across the finish line. See, there are people who care. In previous years, similar bills passed in the Minnesota House, but failed in the Senate. If the legislation is signed into law, it would require the Bureau of Criminal Apprenticeship to operate a missing person alert program for black women and girls. The Office of Missing and Murdered Black Women and Girls would review missing persons and cold cases. And the first of its kind project is expected to cost roughly $2.5 million. They are pouring into black women. Do not think you don't have allies, no matter what the race or gender. There are people who care about you. There are people who know what's going on and want you to know that you matter. Thank you again, Minnesota. Let's continue with the article. In the United States, black women only make up 13% of the female populations, but studies found that we make up 35% of missing women. Oh, 35% oh, in the country. In 2020, during the pandemic, nearly 100,000 of the 250,000 women that went missing in this country were women of color. Now, when we hear women of color, that can include Asian, Hispanic, Native American. Let those numbers sink in. Where are these women? Are they being trafficked? Are they being harvested? God knows what's going on. But there are people who believe nobody will care. These are black women, only 13%. They don't have a community of men that march for them or even women. Nobody would care. So maybe they're more easy targets and stuff. But no, Minnesota is stepping up. Currently, national statistics tell us that over 60,000 black women are missing. That's a hell of a lot. And black women are twice as likely than they appear to be victims of homicide. Brittany Lewis, the co-founder of Research and Action, told Yahoo News. In the state of Minnesota, black women are three times more likely to be unalive than white women in Minnesota. And they won't say all the time, who's doing the unaliving? According to the state report completed by Minnesota's Missing and Unalive Black Women, Girls and Task Force, created in 2021, black women are less likely to receive media attention when we go missing. What they said was, what we are finding is that when people are disappearing for a number of reasons, such as trafficking of our young girls, domestic violence, mental health reasons, and other systemic reasons, Natalie Wilson, who is the co-founder of the Black 
and Missing Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization to bring awareness to missing people of color. This is what she told Yahoo News. She said she's working to bridge the gap so that all missing women have the same media attention and resources. You know, I would love the day I see missing black women get attention on CNN and Fox News, major news networks. I, I wouldn't want black women or any woman to go missing, but we definitely need, need the, the media coverage a lot more. She said, we're trying to eliminate this barrier because what we're finding oftentimes with our communities is that race, zip codes, where you live, education, your economic status, all of these things are barriers. It really shouldn't be. It shouldn't matter where you come from. It shouldn't matter how much money you make, your, your race, your religion. It doesn't matter. People matter. In 2016, when 21-year-old Keisha Jacobs went missing in Richmond, Virginia, her mother said she faced barriers that made her feel like she was the only one searching for her child. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one fighting here, Tony Jacobs, her mother said. She told Yahoo News. When I went to file the police report that she was missing, it felt like the police officer didn't believe me. Oh, so that's her, Keisha Jacobs on the left with her mother. And she is missing. And I can't imagine what she felt and feels, you know, you walk in, the police are there to help you, to protect you, to make you feel like you matter. And you go in and say that my daughter's missing and they brush it off, you know, because, oh, well maybe, oh, okay, it's because I'm a black woman or uh, maybe you assume things about me, maybe the way I speak, the area that I'm from. And this has to stop, this type of mindset. She said, people said, oh, she had a boyfriend. She just ran out. She was pregnant and she was scared to tell me. I mean, these are the first things that come to my mind. And I'm like, it's not fair. According to experts, cases that involve missing black women and girls stay open four times as long compared to other cases involving white people. People are taking them because they know they're not getting attention. What did I say? It shouldn't have to... I, I shouldn't have to wait six years and honestly believe I'm fighting my, by myself to bring my daughter home. Six years? Six years. Her daughter has been missing six years. Our cases are open four times as long and even our so-called community doesn't even fight or, or do searches like that. Let's just be honest here. And it's because of our value to people, a number of people. There are people who care, but there are also people who don't. And this this is disgusting. Six years, I can't imagine what her mother is going through. In 2014, eight-year-old Relisha Rudd went missing in Washington, D.C., and she still hasn't been found. An eight-year-old baby girl since 2014 still has not been found. Someone said. If a white girl with blonde hair and blue eyes goes missing, every light comes on. But when a black girl or black woman goes missing, you never hear about it. Dr. Verma Price, founder of Girls Taking Action, a nonprofit, again, organization in Minnesota that mentors young girls, she told Yahoo News. Experts say this is known as missing white woman syndrome, a term that refers to the unequal amount of coverage that white women receive compared to women of color. Well, who owns these news stations? Who puts more efforts into finding people? But we are a part of this country, but we all need, everyone needs to step up. Even people in the black community who also do not make an outrage or feel an urge to find these black women and little girls. And in some cases, boys who are missing, you know? We need the same, you need the same outrage you have when you march for BLM. You can do that for BLM, but come hard for these women. Why can't you do it for these women and these girls and these missing little boys? So in 2021, MSNBC host Joy Reid called the coverage of Gabby Petito a prime example of missing white woman syndrome. She said, why not the same media attention when people of color go missing? As you can see in this photo, this woman was a demonstrator 
she was uh, demonstrating and protesting on behalf of the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls, which is also high as well. According to Lynette Gray Bull, founder of Not Our Native Daughters, white people were more likely to have an article written when they are still missing, she said to MSNBC. Price says this is not just a problem in Minnesota as black women and girls have been targeted nationwide. In this country, black women since slavery have been dispensable, disposable, and it's high time that we protect us, Price said. Richardson and supporters of the legislation said they are hopeful that the bill will pass and spur other states to take action on the issue. We believe that this is a blueprint for a national response, Richardson said. We are hoping that we can help lead the way to ensure that black women and girls are extended the same protection and the same support and the same energy that we see in coverage of other cases. So again, I'm very happy to see that Minnesota has stepped up with this bill to help protect and search for missing black girls and women. We are neglected. But I said during my live recently that there's reasons for that. Now, I didn't want to bring it on this video. I'm going to keep it short. Number one, we don't own the news media. Number one, white men go hard to find their women. White men make resources to find their women. White men go hard to investigate. White people go hard to get these stories out. Okay, so I'm going to keep this short. And I just want to say that I'm happy to see that Minnesota is doing this. This means a lot. It definitely will help. But most of all, the cops, the, the investigators have to care. The black community has to care. It can't just be, you know, a lot of these lawmakers who aren't all black people doing this and black people, the so-called community doesn't get involved. We need you to give the same energy again that you give to BLM for these missing women. If you can gather for marches and protest by the thousands, why can't we march and protest to do a search? And if we don't have the resources, which a good portion of us don't, why can't we can march? and ask those that do have the resources, resources to lend a hand to help be able to find these women. You can write the FBI, you can press them to help you find some, some, some of these women, these girls, hopefully all of them. But this is just the beginning and they're doing something great. But you know, everyone has to care, including us, because we are neglected heavily in this so-called community let's just keep it let's just be honest and serious about it it's the truth we need to see black girls and women protected and the boys that go missing but it's largely girls and women so shout out to minnesota i just wanted to share this story with you they're doing something very incredible by focusing on missing black girls and looking at cold cases they're sending a message Minnesota that yes, we feel that you do matter and we're going to do something. So that's all I wanted to share with you. I can't wait to hear your opinions. Bye everyone.